Hi, in this video I want to talk to you about the formation of a geological resource that's very important for Britain. It's a resource that's still uh, mined in parts of the country and has a, a very wide range of uses. That deposit is China clay. Now, China clay is a feature of the southwest of England. You can see the areas marked on this map as kaolinized are the places where we find the China clay. Kaolinite is the, uh, the mineral name uh, for this material. You can see that its location is determined by the location of the granite plutons in Cornwall and Devon. China clay, as we'll see, is a product of the weathering of granite. Now the original discovery was made over 250 years ago down in far west of Cornwall. However, modern exploitation of this resource takes place further east in two areas, in southern Dartmoor and also around St Austell in Cornwall. If we look at that original um, discovery uh, around a place called uh, Tregoning Hill, it shows a little bit about the importance of the geology of China clay. This relatively small pluton actually is made of different types of granite. You can see in the centre there, there's uh, an intrusion of a biotite rich granite. And then surrounding that, there's a intrusion of uh, a lithium rich mica granite. And it's that lithium rich granite that makes kaolin. This is a resource that's still being extracted today. Many of the geological resources we study in Britain are historical. The, uh, if they're still being extracted on it's a much smaller scale. China clay extraction though is still a big industry in this part of the world. This is uh, the St. Austell granite. The extraction of uh, the China clay here okay, is in uh, particular parts of this granite. You can see again the biotite granites uh, here on the eastern side of this intrusion aren't really uh, extracted or don't really have china clay extracted. The biotite in the granite when it weathers releases iron which stains the clay, makes it useless really for the fine ceramic work or the paper coatings that kaolin uh, is used for. This process then is one that turns feldspar, particularly uh, sodium rich plagioclase, and turns it into uh, kaolinite, china clay. Orthoclase can also be turned into uh, kaolinite. Um, we also get uh, other minerals that come off it as well. You can see from the equation that it's the addition of water to the feldspar that turns it into kaolinite. If we look at these in cross section, we can see that these uh, kaolin deposits form in like funnels, uh, opening out towards the surface and maybe going down to about 100 meters. D. The centre of the funnel, perhaps where chemical weathering has been uh, most extreme, is where the best clay is found. 
But you can also see from this um, cross section that there are there are other materials in here. So when uh, this material is extracted, careful separation of the the minerals is important. Okay. If we look at the different stages of formation, the first stage clearly has got to be the intrusion of uh, the granites. The biotite-rich um, um, the biotite-rich granite is the first to be intruded around St. Austell, and then about 10 million years later, we get more magma being intruded, uh, which gives us the muscovite and lithium-rich granites which provide the, the kaolinite. As we've already mentioned, and as you can see here, biotite will release this iron. Uh, it gives it the red staining, and, and it really does render uh, any clay that form, comes from this a very, very limited use. And much less valuable than uh, pure kaolinite. The third stage of this um, process is the development of uh, new minerals. Okay, tourmaline. Okay, um, hydrothermal mineralization. Really, towards the end of uh, crystallization of these magmas. The very last stages of this are where we see quartz vein that's then starting to be uh, intruded, uh, altering the granite a little bit more, more uh, in particular hot water uh, being injected through weaknesses within the granite. Now, kaolinite is the product of chemical weathering. Chemical weathering really is, is driven and, um, by two key factors. Firstly, the presence of water. And secondly, if that water is hot, the process becomes more rapid and more intense. For a long period of time, these granites in, the, um, in Devon and Cornwall um, were were hot, and in fact they still are hot, from uh, radioactive um, isotopes. This heat, this residual heat in the granite, will drive convection of groundwater. So water around the granite will be heated and will rise up through um, weaknesses in the granite, causing chemical weathering. That rising of hot water will draw cold water down to send up a convective flow. This hot water, though, passing up through the upper stages of the granite is what causes the kaolinization. It weathers the feldspars into China clay. Now, this happened for, for a long time. From the very end of uh, crystallization processes, right the way through uh, the uh, into the, towards the end of the Paleogene. We also have, at this time, Britain in tropical climates. Chemical weathering from the surface down. This still continues today. The um, mild, wet climate of southwest England um, will cause a little kaolinization, although really nothing like at the same rate as we've seen in the past. So to conclude, this is an important resource, one that has um, shaped the landscape of Devon and Cornwall. We see uh, the pits where this has been uh, extracted in the past, such as here in the Eden Project, and the mountains of waste materials sieved out of the, uh, the clay deposits that were extracted.
forming the, the famous St. Austell Alps. It's still, though, an active industry. It's still an important resource for us here in Britain. Don't forget your interesting question that you can bring along to class. I'll see you then.